okay? All right, so smiling faces. No smiling faces? Oh, jeez. What's going on with all today? Anytime I come for an interview, I always smile. The first thing you've got to do is the person in front smile. And they want to see for you. <laughs> a smile works wonders. Yeah? Otherwise, they'll think you've got stresses and worries. Now, who would want stresses and worries to come into their workplace? No one. Mm, think about it. So you've learned a lesson today, right? All right? Anytime you sit in close, smile. Don't over smile. Like a Cheshire cat, but smile. Okay? So I'm sure you're wondering what you're doing every day. All right, this building here, all right, just give me an idea when you're ready, yeah? Rolling. Are oh, you rolling already? Yeah. I didn't realise. Right, this building here is called The Works. And what we do here is enterprise development for a lot of companies. But we also do, have anyone heard of European Regional Development Funding? It's funding that comes through Europe to support companies to develop them and grow. Okay? And it's also, the building is actually run by an organisation called the Clients Offensive. That's why we all have these wonderful badges. Okay? And I suggest you check them out. They're a charity that do a lot of works and random acts of kindness. The whole focus around the building here is it's a pilot and there's not been one like it before. And it's about getting people into enterprise incubation and developing those businesses so they become more successful, sustainable in growth. Does anyone have any idea how long a business gets to last in terms of startups in the UK? The fallout rate. Does anyone have any idea? Right, but within the first year, how many tend to fall out? Oh, 90%. Yeah, that's right, yeah, 9 out of 9, 10. Man, no? Yeah? So if you think 9 out of 10 businesses in their first year fall out, right? It's not very good statistics, is it? So that's what we've developed this for, and we've done it in line with um, local initiatives, UK initiatives, and of course European initiatives as well. But of course, we're coming out of Brexit now, so the European initiatives will technically be the back end, but we're still going to be trading with Europe, so it's not totally out of joint. Does that make sense? All right, so the areas that we're really focusing on from our end, which we run from downstairs, um, we have an incubation down there because we deal with enterprise and employment, is traineeships, apprenticeships, graduates and freelance. Okay, to support those businesses that are growing, but primarily um, to get young people or people who are seeking to get into work, um, a level of employment. Primarily for sales driven companies, but today things like business development for sales and so on. But off the back of that, you do have things like business administration and the finance accounts and so on. Okay? Now, what we're looking to do with most individuals who come in is we will take you through a process, and that process that we take you through in terms of development is where are you at, where do you want to go, and why do you want to go there? So, let me ask you, how many of you have a financial plan? It's about right, about 100%. Generally, one might have it, right? So you think about it, you haven't got a financial plan, right? So if I say to you, where do you want to be in the next 10 years, what would that be? Does anyone know? In the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> anyone know? No? All right? So how much money do you want to make in the next 10 years? A lot. How much is a lot? I don't know. But do you understand my point? Yeah. Alright, so what we tend to do with you is get you thinking about those progress first. Alright? Because then we're able to work with you. So it's a level of recruitment, but it's a level of recruitment with higher levels of engagement. Because what we're looking to do is to develop you along a pathway. And the best way to explain that, if you think of yourselves as a commodity, now, supposing, take for instance you, you're 17 years old. Let's say you've never worked before. So you've technically got no skills. Although you may have some transferable skills, right? Right? So we'd have to identify what those skills were to place you. But ideally, we'd also have to look at the skills that you need developing. Would you agree? Yes. Right. Now, suppose we got you into something like a, uh, a traineeship post, and then from a traineeship post, we moved you on after three to six months into an apprenticeship post. An apprenticeship post lasts for how long? 12 months. 12 months. All right, so could we continue to work with you with that employer and even maybe give you a second year of that apprenticeship? After that, I would employ your employers and we move on. Would that be wrong or right? Yeah. Right, so now you've got two years' experience, let's say. All right, now would you be worth the same amount two years prior or two years after? Two years after. Absolutely. 
and we can sell you one. Right. Now, let's say after that two years, we now support you to develop you up to a higher level for another three or four years. Three or four years later, would your skills levels be higher? Yes. Would you be worth a lot more to that employer? Yes. Or another potential employer? Yes. So is it in our interest to support you to grow those four or five years? Yes. That's how we Okay? Because you are commodity. And God willing, if you think of your lifetime expectancy, the amount of jobs that you're going to go through, it's in our interest with the model that we're implementing in the UK to support you and develop you throughout that period of time. Does that make sense? Where most organisations will just do recruitment and punish you into the job, collect the money from the employer and leave you right there. We don't want that. And I'll explain to you the different components that we have to do that. You can go away and do your research and so on. Does that make sense? A lot of the learning is online and your consistent development is practical development. Okay? Any questions at this point? Are you getting the concept of what we're talking about here? Huh? So when we talk about traineeships, it would be, we're going to assess you and see, well, where are you at? Now some of you may not be in that mode, some of you may be graduates. But someone like yourself who's starting out, you may not be overly confident to go straight into that job. So you may need a few months of development to build your confidence up. But while you're doing that, you can also get a qualification, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which is going to make you more appealable to the employer. But then, Someone like yourself has got nine months experience and says, hold on, I'm you know, quite happy to go into an apprenticeship. Yeah, because I don't really understand recruitment, but I don't want to learn more about recruitment. So I'm quite happy to take that apprenticeship until I can become, take a professional. Does that make sense? All right? So it depends where you're at in the chain, and that's why we have this grid. All right? The graduate, any graduates here? One, two, three, I had a feeling, right. So, would you be happy to go and do a traineeship? Why? Absolutely. You've put X amount of years in, haven't you? What did you graduate in? Yeah. yeah. In business administration. Okay, good. Right. Yeah. So, what, MBA? Yeah, no. Oh, um, but it's just business budget. Okay. Yeah. And yourself? Economics. Economics? Good. Interesting. All right. And yourself? Business IT. Business IT. Oh, yes. All right. So, we've got three different graduates here. Now, what in London is the demand rate for graduates in terms of ethnic minorities. Does it matter? Are more of graduates getting employed or are more, graduate, more and more graduates becoming unemployed? Unemployed. Right? So, do you think an employer today is struggling to find graduates to fill their post? So what's going to make you more appealable to that employer? Experience. Hmm? Experience. Skills. Some sort of experience and skills, right? Would you agree? Yes. So supposing someone could come along and say to that employer, we want you to employ this person. Over the next 12 to 18 months, we're going to work with you to develop this person. We're going to take all the strain of what you would have to put in to train that individual and at the end of that, that person will come up to the competence level and achieve the targets you expect them to achieve. And we'll sit down with you and we'll plan those targets, what we call KPIs, Key Performance Indicators and so on, together so you understand the competence levels you want them to get to. Would that sound more approachable to an employer? In the meantime, we're going to get that individual to work for a bit less. If I said to you, there's a job, it's 25 to 30,000 a year, okay? But I want you for the first year to take 10,000 less. Well, what I'm going to do is guarantee at the end of that year, should you hit the targets, that you'll get 30,000 minimum plus bonuses and so on. Would you take it? Or would you still continue to look for that? I'll put that question to you first. Would you take the job? Yeah. Would you take it? Yeah. And would you? Yeah. Clever people. Because a year later, you might still be unemployed, but I'll be wrong with it. At least that way, you're gaining experience, you're gaining practicality, so that's what we do. Okay? That's what we call our graduate program. All right? 
And I'm going to touch over these again um, so as we go along. Um, but I'm just giving you an overview so you can get an understanding about what we do. So we're not your average organisation. These models have been developed over a period of the last four or five years, engaging heavily with employers to identify what their needs are. Because most people, they look at recruitment. If I say to you, give me an example of recruitment, give me an example of what you perceive recruitment to be. screens them, takes a CV, screens them or whatever. Am I wrong or right? Alright? Now, is that person likely to be the ideal candidate in today's market? What's the odds? No, the odds are higher than that. <laughs> I wish it wasn't that. <laughs> Alright? But would you say 50-50? I generally they put them on free months probation, man. Right? Do you think the recruitment company's interest is in placing the candidate to collect their money or placing the candidate to ensure that they last five or ten years with that company? Make sure they last. To collect their money. Interesting. That's one and one. Yeah, so? Money. money. money? Go ahead. Recruitment company, do you think it's in their interest or not? To make sure they last or not last? What do you think? Sorry, sorry, sorry. The recruitment company, do you think it's in their interest or not in their interest? I think it is. It is? Yourself? No, yeah, collect the money. Yourself? I want to collect the money. Right, so slightly about, that's probably about right. So we're looking at a 42, which is right, or 70, so I think about 2,000 euros. Okay? Well, that's probably about right. You've probably got a third of companies that's really in their interest, they recognise we want to sustain. And the other 70%, they just want to place the candidate, right? But is there any development in that? Is Where's the support? And that's why, you know, when we're working, we're working towards a stronger economy, a stronger UK economy. We need to identify these things. Grow. They need more and more skills. Okay? So as they go through a process. Now, the situation is you have the public sector and you have the private sector. And the two generally don't mix. They're getting closer and closer. We work in line with both. Okay? So we work in line with the public sector which employers can get sorts of funding for things like apprenticeships, traineeships and so on. And we also work in the private sector where people will have to pay you up front to place a candidate. Now, once we screen you, depending on where you're at in the chain, that will determine where you go. Okay? But each one of you, I can assure you, probably step on at different areas at different times. Because we're looking for you to develop professionally, so you have to have your own personal objectives, which is your personal development plan. You have to have some sort of personal development. I spoke to you all of you earlier, knowing you had one, and a financial plan. But you also have to have, the employer has to have a plan to develop their business as well. Would you agree? Now, if your objective doesn't match theirs, is it in our interest to place you there? Yeah. Do you understand? All right? We wouldn't be doing you any justice, would we? And that's what happens a lot of the time. How many times you go to an organisation, people don't want to work for that organisation, but they're working here anyway just to collect the money. Do you think that's fair? Do you think that's just on the company? No wonder why we're struggling in an economy, because the majority of people are not happy where they're working. 60%, percent Yeah. All right, and climbing. And then the stress factors are getting higher and higher, so you're not getting quality employment. People are not happy. People are not going to work and having fun. You should be able to go to work and have fun. Now you all look at me a bit glazed there. <laughs> what? Fun? No. Well, but would it be so much life be so much happier if you went to work and had fun? Would you agree? Yeah. If you've got a higher level of satisfaction. Right? Surely that's what life should be about, right? A reason to get up in the morning, a reason to grow, a reason to have something to aspire to. But more importantly, know what you're aspiring to. And do you know why most of those people are unhappy? Because they don't have life plans. They don't know why they're working. Maybe if you was in a job you didn't want to be in and it was a means to an end, you could still go there being happy, right? Because you'd be smiling at everybody thinking, yeah, six months time, I'll see you in the back of you. Ha <laughs> ha, goodbye, ha <laughs> ha, I'm gonna find a job and then F you, I'm on to the next one. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you know where you're going. And if you get involved in this canteen culture, where uh, 
I don't like the boss because the boss has got Ferrari and I can't buy one. And he's an idiot. A very expensive idiot, my head, but he's an idiot. Where'd you end up? Do you understand my point? So we want to get you in the right frame of mind before you actually go and work for employers. Because we're working from what we call demand-led, an employer's perspective. Yes, we work with you. Yes, we support you. But we're looking at the employer primarily first. Because that's what gets the economy going. Does that make sense? So hence why we'll have traineeships for young people primarily, 16 to 23, to develop a certain level of skill set. And then on to the apprenticeships, the graduates, and then the freelancers. There's no freelancers in the room. I actually want freelancers. So in terms of enterprise, those of you who want to start your own business, some of you may be more affluent, we support and develop that as well. Okay? But it all crosses over these key areas. These are the sectors that we work in. These are the only sectors that we work in. So telecommunications. What you're looking at there is things that like people have heard of VoIP. VoIP? Have you heard of VoIP? No? Voice over IP? You know how that? Telecommunications, voice over IP phones, broadband technology. No voice conferencing, video conferencing. Yeah? You know how that? Yeah? Virtual offices, anyone? <laughs> no? <laughs> you guys are supposed to be young. You guys are supposed to be up I was at that age. Eh? Virtual offices, mobile phones, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Anyone got a mobile phone? Anyone not got a mobile phone? Uh, telecommunications, right? Okay? That's what we're talking about. So, anything related to communications in terms of that, or when you see those big masks on top of the roof, anything related to that. Yes, we are very sales driven, so it could mean anything from selling a mobile phone to selling a, 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 a telecommunication mask, as in satellites. Right? But primarily, what we're talking about really is broadband technology, the hardware that goes with it, the phones, the equipment, the voice conferencing, and so forth. Okay? Very, very large growing industry at the moment. Then we're looking at education. Education in terms of apprenticeships, graduate type stuff, high level apprenticeships, degrees, right through. Okay? But also training programs as well. So it's looking for people who are supporting that sector, which is a very large growth sector at the moment. Well, if you doubt, we go online, look on the internet, and you'll see lots and lots of companies there doing education, but a lot of them are not credit. We mainly focus on a lot of credit and learning, which is online, and very much online, higher level apprenticeships at the moment, which is your level five, sixes, and seven, which is equivalent to a degree, a master's degree or PhD. Okay, but online, okay? So looking for people who are actually actively work in, who need that extra higher level skill support. But it's the same chain, and you understand that an individual would come from as well. Recruitment. You mentioned you want to do recruitment earlier. All right, so what type of recruitment are you looking to do? Um, I, don't, I don't really mind what type of recruitment I want to do. See, that worries me, yeah? But uh, you understand my point. Yeah. By the time we finish with us, you'll know what type of recruitment you want to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Did you know you can do recruitment to do recruitment? That sounds bad, then. One of the main areas that we place people at the moment is in recruitment. Because recruiters need recruiters. Does that make sense? Fair? So it's one of the key areas. Because they're struggling to get the kind of quality and level that they need. But when you're going into recruitment, it's always good to know what you're going to specialise in. And not to be too generic. What areas do you like? What did you like? Did you study at school? Yeah. What did you study? History, biology, chemistry. Right. Did you enjoy those subjects? History. Right. Yeah. You enjoyed history, but you did farm and biology and chemistry. So it might be something like pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Massive, massive industry in pharmaceuticals. Do you understand my point? So you're looking at your skill set and then you're balancing off. Or it might be something you want to learn a lot about. Right? Like you might be into gaming, for instance. Right? Which is where the software comes in. Right? But it's not only software, we do a lot of CRM, linking to a lot of CRM technology as well. Do you understand? All right? And this works for those who want to go into employment and those who want to start their own business as well. These are the areas that we cover. Finance. You spoke about doing finance. You spoke about working on markets. We do everything from a street market to a stock market. Okay? Not so much what you were doing. It's a bit different when we supply to the city. It's a bit different. 
But when you check out our website, you'll see, particularly my partner, or one of my businesses um, that I work with, is uh, Bob Everett Limited. He's an ex global sales director for uh, Reuters many years ago. I think it's been about 20 years or so. And he's got four best selling books on the market at the moment. Two of them are best sellers, actually, four are very well selling. But two of them are best sellers in the category. You'll see that on the website. Really. Okay? So, obviously, stock markets is something we're very much interested in. Those who want to get into that industry. But have you got the knowledge to do it? Do you have the hunger? And more importantly, do you want to develop the ability to do it? Does that make sense? No? And obviously things like mortgages, CMAP, which is a mortgage qualification and so forth, which also cover finance, investments, everything from a pension to large scale investment. Where do you want to be? Where are you on the Richter scale? Do you want to do domestic? Do you want to do commercial? Do you want to do more retail banking stuff? Do you want to do more merchant banking? What's your ambition? What's your goal? So we have to identify that prior to placing you anywhere. That's imperative. Because without that, we can't go. Does that make sense? All right, any questions up to this point? Well, the elite pathways, well we've got, particularly, we've developed seven key pathways, which are sales pathways primarily. And those pathways are for individuals coming through. And what we do with that pathway is we put you through a specialist sales program. Those of you who want to get into selling, whether it be telemarketing, lead generation, closing, whatever it may be. And we put you through a specialist program. We approach an employer and we say to the employer, much as I said earlier, but this is slightly different. We have individuals that want to get into sales. They are not qualified in sales. Does anyone know what the churn rates are for big entry level sales? In terms of how many, if I started 10 people, how many are likely to stay and work for that company past the first year? Three. It's about right. Second year, it's near enough. What is this? Right? Because sales is not seen as a profession, it's not seen as a pathway. Did they speak to you about sales when you were in school? Um, no. Right. Did they speak to you about it? Did you speak to Eric about them? Did you hear about them? Did you? No, did you? Did you hear about sales when you were in school? No way. It's one of the only professions that you can go into without having a qualification. Do you know what I'm saying? Yet still, it's probably the most high end profession there is. There's a hell of a lot of psychology and science and sales. So you've got to really want to do it. So our job is we sell sales. <laughs> We go to the company and so say, we know you're struggling with yourselves, how do you want to do this? So we do sales by results. What results do you want? And then we put place people to make sure they're going to come and get the results. And we work heavily with them, close at hand, to make sure they get those results. Does that make sense? Right? But you've got to know what you want to earn. I mean, if you want a generic wage, then so be it. But if you want 30 grand plus entry level, which is what a lot of people want, then you're going to have to work hard to get it. But the options are going to be less and less to you. Does anyone know what a single person needs today on the standard poor, the minimum standard poor calculator, so calculator for a single person? What the average income is you need to have earned to live in London today? Hmm? Have a guess. Throw a figure. 20,000? Yeah, about 20,000. Well, but you need to, right? Are you single? Mm -hmm. But you better get to know. <laughs> Otherwise, you could be working for less. 25? 25? Let's have about 25. Everyone says that. 25-30. That's what most people sell for 25 30000 And generally thinks it's a good job, right? Oh, 25 30000 is cool. No, no, it's not. 48169 last time I checked. And that was a while ago, so God knows what it is now. But people aren't earning that money. Exactly. Because they're not doing their homework. That's why they're struggling. Do you understand? Right? Sometimes in life you have to do things that you didn't set out to do to survive, to improve, to get better. That's why it's good to know where you want to be in the next 10 or 15 years. Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know what you need to earn to get there? Hmm? If I'm going to get a house worth, I don't know, even 500,000, which is not massive amounts of money, does it make sense that I work for 30,000 a year? 
Am I likely to get out of the house? No. I'm going to wait until the rest of my days, right? Mm. Yeah? Now, most people are happy to work with that. Oh, I'll get a partner, and we'll both join our income, and we'll both hit the 30,000 bracket. Voila, you get 60,000. Times it by three and put another half on it, you got just over 200,000 pounds. Ouch. What's the average house price in London today? Need to go there, right? And then you're going to have kids. I don't know how they do it. Honestly, I really admire people that can do it. But you going forwards. They don't, that's why they're in debt. Absolutely. Credit runs things, right? Do you want to live your life on credit? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Well, do something about it. Get a financial plan. Plan a finance. Plan something. Do you understand? Say, so this is year one, and I'll show you something here. I'm going to not spend too long on this. Have a vision. All right, this is my 10 to 20 years. So when you walk out of here today, I want you to think about where do I really want to be in 10 or 20 years' time? You might be back on Coca Cola Beach, right? It's like speaking pina coladas. But yeah, pina coladas is like, you might be that. But you've got to have money to do it. Am I wrong or right? Brazil's not cheap, right? You don't want to be in the favelas, right? That's not a place to live. You want to be where it's all happening, right? It's money, right? Then you've got to have off that a mission. So you've got another five years. I'll break it all down for you in a minute. This is where most people start with objectives. Oh, get yourself some objectives. But it's very out of date planning like this. You know, just on objectives alone, it's very difficult to get where this is where most people start. What I'm going to do over the next year. And they're planning forward. Do you understand? Know they're planning forwards all the time. Oh, well, I've got a plan, I've got to make a plan, I've got to make the business teaches you that as well. Make a forecast. Forecast? We'll get to that in a minute. Target. So I know your target is monthly. Oh, am I that? You better know what you're doing every week. So you've got some sort of routine rota, right? Which is weekly. Let me just give you a basic taster of what we do here so you can get an idea now I'm going to wrap up shortly for any questions. Daily. Right, so here you determine what you want over 10 or 20 years. You visualize it. Right? But you don't just visualize it. What kind of house you want? Hmm? Me. Yeah. Um, a big house. A big house. How big? Uh, six bedrooms. Six bedrooms, right. Where? Um, just outside, outside of London. Where? Do you understand? Yeah. Right? What do you want inside of it? Marble floors, granite worktops? Cost money. God, how much is it going to cost, right? How much is a mortgage outside of London? Where do I want to live? Because if you know where you want, you can pinpoint it. Nothing stops you from going on the website today. That's the beauty of internet technology. And say, outside London, Gerrard's Cross, Adersham, if you're going in that direction, Buckinghamshire, you can go to all Surrey. Virginia Waters and places like that, if you really want to go up market. And cost, what would it cost for a house like that? How much would I need to earn? Am I making sense here? Yeah? That will determine what your working life's going to be. Because there's no sense wanting a big ass and going and do a two-pop jump. Because you ain't going to happen, son. You might do it as a means to an end to get the skills. I can see that. But to say you're going to do that for five or ten years, hmm? you need to be in something that's more performance-related or accelerate, there's got excessive bonuses or lots and lots of commission on top of probably want a basic salary, basic salary. Does that make sense? Yeah? But you see straight away, you didn't know. But you know you want a big ass. How often do we sit down and have these conversations? I want a big ass. I want a nice car. What car? What car do you want? What car do you want? You don't know. But you want a car, right? A nice one. You look at that Mercedes when it goes along, you say, I like that. I want one of them. The Porsche goes along, I want one of them. The Ferrari goes, I want one of them. The Lamborghini, I want one of them. Right? How are you going to get it? Do you think successful people sit there and go, I'll get one of them one day. Oh, don't worry. I'll have that. Do you think that's what successful people do? Or do you have a plan? Breaking down by priority here, you go by priority again. 
But this time, you take the first year of the first five years, and you say, this is what I'm going to do over the next year. This is what I'm going to do year one, this is what I'm going to do year two, this is what I'm going to do year three, to achieve that goal. And you break it down. You take the first year by priority, and you focus on that year. Okay? And then you take the first month of the first year, and you break it down by priority again over a period of 12 months. But you break it down by priority again. Then you take the first week of the first month and you break it down by priority again. And you work accordingly, but prioritizing all the time. You'll find your thinking will come from there to there. You might do one thing every month, but it's one thing that ticks your boxes to your vision. Most people are always in a hurry, they're in a rush because they think they've got to get everything done now. Everything needs to be done now, now. That's because they're not spreading their thinking. The brain can only take so much. Remember, it's a living mechanism. Okay? So you've got to be able to use it. It's a wonderful tool, but you've got to be able to exercise it in the right way. So we're talking neurological here, neuroscience. All right? Then we'll take the first week, the first day from the first week, and break it down again. So when I start tomorrow, whatever I do tomorrow, determines what I'm going to do over the next 20 years. Does that make any sense? Day by day. But I already know where I'm going. Then, what I do, alongside this, now I've got all my goals by priority, I put in my financial, my finances. I want a big house, how much is it? Where do I want to live? Because if you don't know where you want to live, how do you know how much money you need to earn? Is it going to be a half million pound house? Is it going to be a million pound house? What is it going to be? You have to be specific. Otherwise, what are you working for? Excuse my French, but you're pissing in the wind. It's not really French, it's straight out of East London, but you know. <laughs> okay? Direction. Right? That's what we want. Responsible employees. That's what we want. So we develop you. We get your mind right. And we help you to work on that. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect in the beginning. But we're supporting you to develop at all times. Because your finances have to be right. Year one, I might want to earn 20,000. Year two, 40,000. Year three, 55. So there's a consistent drive. And then it's how I'm going to do it. Now, if you want to earn anything above 40,000 today, name me some jobs that can do it. Well, you can get into it. And you can earn 40,000 plus. We're going to wrap up soon. Let me some jobs that can do it. Actuary. Um, I'm in the stock market. I'm actuary. Right, stock market, right? Sales driven, right? Would you agree? Performance driven, then, let's say. Right? What else? Football. <laughs> Leave that one out. You mean selling footballers? I can see that. There's a lot of money in that. Huh? Project management. Project management. Yeah, you can do that. But what's the likelihood of getting the top project management role today? Huh? What's the odds? It can be done, but what's the odds? Hmm? If I said I can go into recruitment, I get a job in recruitment, or I get a job in project management, entry level, say 35, 40 grand. Right? At that level, because I don't need that, right? What am I more likely to get the recruitment job or the project management? Because more demand, right? You've done economics, what's economics based on? Supply and demand, right? If the demand's not there, does it make sense supplying it? So, if you're going to go into looking for work, don't you think you should look for an area that there's demand? That you can grow with? Hmm? But once you know what your financial plan is. Because sometimes, you just need to understand, it's not what you want to do, it's what society enables you to do. To get to where you want to get to. Sometimes you've got to swallow and then move on to where you want to get to. Does that make any sense? All right? So I'm not saying you should accept second best. What I'm saying to you is if you have a goal, by any means necessary to achieve that goal. Because that's your goal, that's your vision. If you've got sweet floors for six months to get a skill and then move on to say picking apples and then move on, but eventually it may be well to get on the stock market. Because sweeping floors helps me to understand waste management at a grassroots level if you look at it for what it is. Right? Picking up.
apples help me to understand how apples grow and whatever. So I'm going to stock market, I might want to invest in apples. If I don't understand how they grow, what seasons they are, what are good ones, bad ones, what the yield is, so I wouldn't be wasted if your head is on. But if I'm just picking apples for the sake of it, without paying attention to the industry I'm in, does that make sense? It's the price you put on yourself. The next step is you're coming for a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll invite him for one. That can be done online or that can be done visually. And we'll sit down and do a one-on-one. -on -one. All right? And there, there and then, you'll see I'll start to play with some figures with you and get you moving. Uh, anyone coming in a CV today? Nobody? No problem. Please forward your CV over as well. All right? I know we've got it online, but I, actually we've got your CV. It's cost us what you see, doesn't it? Because you've all applied through the online system. Is that right? You didn't apply through the virtual system. Yeah? So we've got your CV. It's good. All right, so I've got your CVs. We'll invite you for a one-on-one. -on -one. And then from there, we'll start placing it and going from there. All right? How soon do you guys want to get into work? How soon do you want to get into work? As soon as possible. So as possible. All right. So, to do what? Good. Yeah, you like that industry, don't you? Yeah, have you researched it? Uh, not do you know it's one of the fastest growing industries today? Do you know you can work from anywhere in the world? Do you know? I'm setting up one in the Caribbean now, and I've got people setting up looking at the well, set of Ghana, Nigeria, Gambia. All folded into the UK. You can live anywhere you want. You work from home. It's a brilliant industry. <laughs> Easy life. <laughs> Smart girl. <laughs> yeah? Demand, right? Yeah? It's just how much you want to make out of it now to how good you want to become. Does that make sense? Alright? That's what, you're 22, you said, right? Yeah. There you go. You've got time. Yourself, you're working from business admin, but you're not obviously going to stay there if you've got a degree in um, financing. What's the option? The thing is, I used to work with um, my degrees in related to foreign trade. Brilliant. So. Foreign direct investment, things like that, yeah? Yeah, so I can, well, management and finance and oh, also work with You're pretty much a star, right? Yeah. Investment broker. Yeah, yeah, I tried to. What happened? Well, I've moved three months ago, so I'm right. so, trying again. Yeah? So, you've, you've sold? Kind of. Well, kind of, but that's probably your weakness, right? You need to start skill. But if you did, did you imagine how valuable it would be? Can you see what we're here? Yeah. That's why I want the one-on-one. -on -one. All right? So we can get our heads together and start really listening. Let's polish you up. You look the part, now you've got to go and believe you're the part. Mm -hmm. Go and get it. And then you lost some money while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, simple. I ain't going to lie to you. I tell you how it is. That's the reality of it. And come back to me every two or three years and I'll shift you. All right? That's how we work. We do have a very, very um, community end of it, but I'm not going to get into that today. Yourself. Recruitment. Big boy recruitment. So what do you plan to do? Start your own company at the end of what? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Do you know what hope is? Do you know what hope is? It's the worst drug in the world. Get out. Get out. Hope. You'll never say that word again. Move that chair. Right. Now don't move it. Now try and move it. Now I said, try and move it. No, you moved it. Try and move it. Exactly, what happened? What happens when he tries to move it? Huh? He stuck in hope there, didn't he? Hope is worse than heroin. It's the worst drug in the world. Hope you. It's a horrible drug. I'll try it. No, you won't. You'll either do it or you don't. But you don't try it. Because you see what happens when you try it. And then you self denial. Oh, I tried. I tried. Leave me alone. I tried. <laughs> I've got no mercy for trials. I don't do trying. You do it or you don't. I don't care which way you end up, but at least you went for it. Does that make sense? Valuable lesson to learn. Alright? So you're going to do it, right? I will. I can. I do. I did. Not maybe. Don't have pay bills. Okay? Take a seat. Well done. Thank you for that. Yourself. Young, 17, ready to go. What part of London are you from? Oh. Ah, you're local. North West London. Fly out. So you'd have seen it like in your time. Yeah? you got the 1960 sideburns as well, so what are you on, the rockabilly town on the skull or what? Is that your new thing? What's going on there? Hey, you ain't going in a, a wide shirt and so, yeah? Next thing you're going to be twisting for me, doing some rock. See, yeah, I don't know, it's got the bumpers on there. 
<laughs> you're moving, man. Swear, you got your own style. You look in front of the mirror, you're going to say you want to grow that beard. But you don't want to grow the full beard because you're a bit worried. You might be a bit too bum fluffy. So you've got to keep the sideburns, right? <laughs> yeah? I know how it is, mate. We all want to be a man when we're young. But what do you want to, what do, you want to do? Do you really want to get the sales? Is that what you want? Yeah. You want to make lots of money? Yeah. You do? We'll keep that one, yeah? I was 16 when I bought the sales. Never looked back. And it was my misfortune. And I ended up finding, and I'm going to end on this though. I took a job, the only job I've ever had in life. I won't name the company, but it was a reprographic company in Picton Place in the 80s. 83, I think it was. And because it was in Mayfair, that part of London, I liked it. Because the area, I thought, yeah, I could do with this. I gave him a job as a junior um, messenger. I used to pick up these codes. Going up in sexual companies or lawyers' companies, pick them up, bring it back to the reprographic company to be printed. And who's under Sunny Walkman? Anyone ever Sunny Walkman? Well, you know now as MP4s. In our times, it was Sunny Walkmans with the headsets and that. You know the Walkman personal hi fi Because remember, people used to walk around with boogie boxes, big double bass speakers on their shoulders, you know? That was the in thing. So when the personal hi fis came in, it was a bit, I had a really good one, but big speakers, yeah. And there's a company in Manchester Square. Still there today, I was actually taking students there earlier. Yeah. And when I went in there to pick up the thing, this architect must have been having a bad day. And he came and gave me one big slap on the back. Now I come out of Hackney, right? I don't muck about. You hit me, I knock you out, right? Simple. And I rolled my fist up, and somebody said to me, Don't do that. And I don't even remember, I just blanked. And I remember coming out of there and crying. And crying. And crying. And crying. I didn't want to go back to the life I was living. I wanted to change. But this man, rather than speaking to me, abused me by slapping me on the back. And where I come from, you don't accept that. So I ended up walking around the West End, and all of a sudden, someone said to me, Look up. I didn't realise it was two or three hours later, by the way. I didn't realise that when it caught me time when I went to the photo. And I made him because he was a great man, a guy called Peter Tillion. And I went up there and it was written by a felt-tip pen in the window. Sales reps wanted. And I worked out as a Ferrari downstairs. There's a little fashion little workshop, a non-stop. Anyone know Portland Street, Westminster, Westminster? All where all the suppliers are fashion down there? Well, this was Margaret Street. And I went upstairs and I walked in. I said, right, I want a job. Well, well I didn't say, like, I want a job. Right? That's how I spoke to him. Right? My eyes were all puffed up. Well. And he looked at me, you can't be talking to me like that. He said to me, I'll tell you what I'll do. I can see you've had a bad day. You go home, you come back here tomorrow at nine o'clock, and we'll talk about whether you can have a job or not. But you don't come in here and talk to me like that, asking for a job, because that ain't the way you're gonna get a job. I'm like, well, I want a job. I said, I've just told you, <laughs> he stood up with his big hairy chest and his medallion, right? and his silk shirt, tell you, I long hair, very good looking man. Yeah, the one, you won't remember Linda the side, you're a bit too um, young. Yeah. But she was the page three girl of the day. And he had a wife that looked just like her. So, you know, a lovely, elegant dress, whatever. Yeah, beautiful couple. And I saw him. So I suffered that. I was there the next day, I called to my, and he came in. And I was right about the Ferrari, so that made my day. Because I see him pull up in the Ferrari. Right? I thought, I'm going to get my in one day. That was my thing then. But I came in. Do you know I became that man's? Regional manager within six months. No. Right? There was a commission only job. We used to go around with a bag of clothes. Right? We used to be a company called Sleeves, we called Showcase, and we used to sell clothes out of our bag. Just going around to hairdressers, estate agents, selling clothes. And they weren't cheap. I was selling clothes at £18, £25 back in 1983 84. Do you understand? Out of a bag. Now you do that, people think you're mad. They want it for a fiver. Right? And these were good, you know, good, decent clothing. So the point I'm making, sometimes things fall by misfortune. I've never looked back since. I've never worked for a wage for that. But the market's changing, so a lot of sales companies today will pay wages. I understand that. All right? But obviously, what you've got to understand, they're taking a the wage, they're giving us commission. So you've got to understand that too. But we'll get into that. All right? Because good salespeople always never sell themselves short. But I can understand where the market's at today. All right? And a lot of companies who work with, they will pay you that, that basic salary, but they want blood. But if you're prepared to give that, you can grow. All right? But what I'm saying to you is, you know, things happen by misfortune. I never planned to get into sales. 
I just don't want to earn a lot of money. If it wasn't for Peter Tilling, I'd never be there. Another boss after that was a guy called Paul Morgan, where I left Peter because I went for more commission, the fire extinguishers, just around the corner. <laughs> I bumped into him, he saw me walking with the bag and come up to me and pitch me. How could I say no? <laughs> the deal that he gave me, believe you me. Yeah? And then I even went, and then I went into other industries, by 18 I you know, got my first mortgage. You know, within two years I started out, it happens. All right, so the point I'm making to you is if you've got a plan and you meet good people that are willing to help you to develop that plan, you've got something, but you've got to know what you want in life. If you don't know what you want, don't look for work. Stay at home. It's a waste of time. You're just going to be a miserable bastard. Because you will never be happy. Know what you want. So when you sit down with me, I want you to be able to say to me, Von, I want to make X amount, or I want, I want a house, I want to build a family. I want this, I want that. I want you to think about what you want before you come and see me. And I'll show you how it can be achieved. Okay? Can you do that for me? Yeah? That's all I need from you. The rest is mandatory. But let me know what you want. Alright? Now you might be rather wrong about it, but at least it gets you into that planning mode. Does that make sense? Yeah? Let's start focusing and start separating you from the rest out there. Alright? Now I'm going to give you some websites. Have you all got pants? We'll email them to you as well. I want to check these websites out. The first one is www.blimited-sales.com. Got that? We'll email them. But just in case those of you are being proactive, they have one www.global. Education with an eight, where I had, because it's got to be different, right? Dot org. Yeah? Tell your market in your end, man. I'm going to introduce you to the most innovative thing that's hit this planet in years in relation to telemarketing. What's the key to telemarketing? What do you need? Mm. What do I mean? What do you What do you need? <laughs> Telephone. Certainly. Telephone? It's a start, isn't it? Well, what is it that you need to make on the phone? Cool. Effective communication. Yeah, all of that. But what's the key to telemarketing? Effective communication. And good sales. Yeah, you got all that. You can have all that. You can communicate all your life. If you ain't got this, you're going nowhere. What do you need? And it's a sales for a lot of money today. What do you make the calls on? Leads. Data. Right? Well, we've got a database of over 5 million contacts in. Does that sound good? Yeah? And it's running electronically. You like the sound of that? I'm going to use the database to go check it out. Yeah? That's the game. Mm -hmm. That's the game. You e-market it, you follow through. Because you know, a lot of people doing telemarketing, they're not doing it effectively. You know? You use a bit of social media with it. There's lead generation, you pull it through. There's way and weird ways means you do things when you're selling as well. So I want to have a look at this. And we've set it up as a club, B2B League Force. Club.com. Okay? When you go on the website, you see a lot of our partners there. Check them out as well. Um, but be a little bit. And then I want you to also check out this one, the last one. Sales Innovation. Expo. That's another one, that's our key partner that we work with. They run the massive sales expo every year. They do a lot of other expos, but they run that as well. Okay? You'll see me on there as well. Okay? Except they'll have a shirt and tie and so they might not recognize me. <laughs> Alright, so go through those four. There is a lot more. There's about 17 different core arms that we work with. I don't want to baffle with science. Have a look. This is our street market, the stock market, our primary, it's part of the Bob Everton Group. So if you do want to get back into stocks this year, it will be very interesting. But if you want to do administration, we'll suffer that as well. But depending on what you want. But you know administration only pays so much. That's your ball part. You talk to me when you come, we'll keep that personal. But if you do want to get back into the real game, then it's still business. All right? Uh, Global Educations is there as well. B2B Lead Force Club. Ideal for what you're doing. All right? Really, really good. And I'll explain that to you when you come. But I want to have a look at it and research it. Um, Behind that is a hell of a lot of data. 
Um, we're taking that offshore to the Caribbean at the moment, and like I said, we're looking at Gambia, Ghana, and Nigeria as well, and selling it bring to offshore, like Brit UK companies for them offshore, using the same system. All right, and um, Sales Innovation Expo as well. And on there, like I said, you'll see things like Commission, Crown, and all these types of companies, sort of that one, Best Innovation, Forbes, or whatever. All right, so have a look at those websites. Costa will contact you and book you in sooner rather than later. So hopefully you guys will be back in. What's the day today? Wednesday? Tuesday. What day is it today? Tuesday. 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 Come on, what's ahead of time? Monday. 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 Is it Monday today? Yes. Uh huh. Monday. So you'll probably be in this week then. All right, it'll be this week or um, the early part of next week. All right, so I'll, I'll have a word of it because I'm not too sure what my diary is. Costa will tell me. And we'll get you booked in there. So when you go down, get to book you in. All right, I'll have a word of it. Get to book you in. All right. So, before you go, any idea what sort of money that you really want to be making before you go? Any idea to start out? No one? No one at all? Weekly. Anyone? Weekly? Monthly? Anyone? No? Alright. Now I'll tell you, you may start earning three, four, five hundred, six hundred pounds a week. But I'm telling you now, anything less than 30,000 in your first year, we're not interested. Anything less. But ideally, I'd like to think you want to make at least a thousand pounds a week minimum. Minimum. Is that clear? Right? Because you've got to meet the standard minimum poor calculator, which I said was how much? 48,000 and a half. 160. Close. <laughs> no, six pound that, 69. Alright? Work within that. If you don't, go back and check it out. Don't listen to me, resist the lock at all. Anyone know what that means? Bit of Latin for you. Hmm? Let the fact speak for itself or let the thing speak for itself. Go do your homework. Alright? £1,000 a week, that's what you should be thinking. No, oh, I spent a lot of money. Not in performance industries, it's not. Alright? Recruitment, you do that standing your head. If you're not doing that, they kick you out the door. Alright? You well, I don't need to say stop so you can do that daily. You can cut that in a place of like, you know, no time whatsoever. Telemarketing, that's what you've got to be. Does that make any sense? You know, business development, whatever. As a young man, 17, I never had the limitations. I was knocking doors at one stage, right? Canvassing. I left doing a shirt and tie job to go out and do a jeans and trainers store. To go around the country knocking doors, like lining up appointments for a salesperson to go in. But I was doing six, seven, eight hundred pounds a week. Do you understand what I'm saying? In the 80s, do you know how much that, what's the equivalent of that today? I thought it was an something pound, isn't it? It's got to be at least double, isn't it? I know why I wouldn't have got a mortgage at 18. I didn't have to go and spend it. I was going to close shop. I was all right, you know, I just ran out of ideas. I got my license when I was 17. I didn't get the XR3 because they were commercial. I've got the 69 right here. You know, not bad for a first car. <laughs> you know? Because they were the cars of the day. They were full to little boy racer cars and stuff. Yeah? So what I'm saying to you, you know, is, you know, think big. You only live once. So think big, don't sell yourself short. Everybody in here is worth something. You're all valuable. You've all got dreams. Don't sell them short. I mean, don't let anyone tell you any different. You can all be somebody, you can do what you want to want. Now, I'm not saying life's all about money. You need to understand what I'm saying. Because that's not how I live. I put a lot back into society, into charity here and all sorts of things as well. But if you haven't got the capital, how are you going to buy the freedom to do the things you really want to do? Okay? That's what I'm talking about. If you really want to help people, you've got to put yourself into a position where you can be able to afford to. Does that make any sense? And have fun while you do it. All right? Good. Thank you for coming today. And you're all going to be great stars, I'm sure. And I want to phone Costco and tell them to book you guys in as you go. You'll meet them downstairs and go from there. All right? Telemarketing, you're going to have so much fun. <laughs> We've got a whole network. I've just really got a lot of innovation going through that at the moment, so you're going to be all right. Sales too. Stock markets were always looking for people to go in that direction. Always. Really. Alright? It's certainly key, but it's only City of London to focus on. We don't do it.
but you know, you got. But I know you do it if you believe it. But you got to believe it. Not try it. Don't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I can. I do. That's the school we come from. All right. There's no try. We don't do try. It's a horrible word. Ifs, buts, maybes. Can I? I know we do it all the time. These are words we pick up in our life, isn't it? You know. But the bottom line is, you know, when we use these words, neurologically, it stick. I tried, so it makes it acceptable. Yeah. Can you imagine if this world never tolerated failure? Because. On the surface, it looks like it does, doesn't it? But does it really? It doesn't, does it? This road is not, it doesn't show a lot of mercy to those who don't fail if you're not competent, does it? Do you understand my point? So think of it like that. Be a success. You will, because you're capable. You're coming through this school for? We'll make sure you do. Because you may need a bit of support, but it don't mean you're not capable. Everybody.